the decision to move to the kind of the production of the white papers is actually stemming from a meeting that took place in Sydney in 2015 that was organized by the Brian Holden Vision Institute jointly with the World Health Organization. This is where the whole story starts. During this meeting, uh, an evidence review was performed and it became very clear, including for the World Health Organization, that myopia is representing a significant global public health problem because myopia is not only a refractive error. It's not just people who need to wear glasses. It is also about the risk of becoming blind, irreversibly blind, because of high myopia. So the role of the International Myopia Institute is to help practitioners in terms of uh, information uh, and evidence basis for the um, practice of myopia control. As we all know, myopia is increasing enormously as a, an epidemic. Evidence-based uh, knowledge is essential for, for daily practice because uh, it gives you that level of confidence that what you're saying to uh, the patient is, is based on, on real fact when t we're taking out the, the natural biases um, that we all have. Um, and the white papers are able to draw that together um, for practitioners in a succinct way that they've got that information. So we went back and we reviewed the literature again up until 2020 and surprisingly even in that short period of time we could see that there was a shift in the prevalence of myopia. So if you're going to have more children in the future who are going to become myopic, what does it mean for that person? What is the lifetime cost of myopia to an individual and what does that translate to the societal level? We've now got two well-identified causal factors uh, for myopia. One is the protective effect of time outdoors, I've, I've already mentioned. The other is the impact of schooling, and intensive schooling, particularly schooling from a, an early age, undoubtedly promotes the development of myopia. So um, there are a lot of exciting um, treatments and, and a lot of understanding on eye growth coming out of animal studies and hopefully through um, well-designed, randomized clinical trials in children, we can translate those findings to um, slowing myopia in children. And also uh, what we should focus on is how does atropine or other treatment uh, to myopia relates to genetics. So are there certain people with a specific genetic background do, that do or do not respond to therapy. So I'd really encourage my colleague clinicians to look at the clinical management guidelines as an anchor for commencing and continuing with myopia management practice.